Welcome to ADHD is over, a new podcast on a seemingly old label that we're going to be peeling off. Join my wife, Tatiana, and I as we journey with our family, the Wyden family, through the land of confusing information. We're going to visit both sides and let you decide because the power is with you. Welcome to ADHD is over. Welcome back to ADHD is over. I love saying that ADHD is over. It's over. It's over. You know, it's kind of like the news. My wife and I always talk about when you declare something with your words. So it shall be right. Word creates and words have created disorders, not just disorders, but anything, a chair the school system, money, and so forth. Words have declared things, systems, disorders, you know, furniture, things of that nature. Words have declared those items. And now to us, they are real. So today I wanted to talk about that. We just interviewed for a special project we're working on the documentary, ADHD is over. We interviewed the awesome disruptor and entrepreneur, Mickey Agrawal. You may know her name, may have heard of her. She started many companies. She owns currently uh, companies worth over a hundred million. One of them, including Tushi, the bathroom bidet, which we own one and it's awesome. Highly recommended Tushi. Look it up, T-U-S-H-Y. She also has started other companies, Spanx. um, There's just a bunch of stuff that Mickey's up to that's just so inspiring. But the reason why I'm mentioning it is we interviewed her yesterday. And one of the things Mickey also talked about was that idea of creation. We create these systems, these names, these things, and then we look at them as reality. And if you're listening to this podcast, something tells me that you are someone who questions reality, who questions the norms, who is more interested in resonance than evidence, who is not someone who is trying to say your study is bigger than my study or my scientist is bigger than your scientist. You know, someone who is not out to find what's right in the the eye of society or, you know, how we, the herd mentality, how most people do it. Something tells me you're someone questioning that. You're either at a fork in the road or on the fence. You know, on the fence, perhaps physically a less comfortable place to be at in the, you know, at a fork in the road, a little physically, a little more comfortable, but still you got to choose to go left or right. And that's why we, by the way, created this podcast, ADHD is over, because there's so many parents right now in a similar place that my wife and I found ourselves four years ago, not knowing, you know, which research to trust, which expert to listen to, 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 you know, (laughs) I don't want to say which experts to trust or to say he's right, she's wrong, you know, that's just confusing. You look at COVID-19 right now, there's so many conspiracy theories and then there's so many things that supposedly are the truth. And on both sides, you know, we will never know the true truth. And I'll say that again, we will never know the true truth because there is no true truth. There's your truth. And then there's just an interpretation of what we think is supposed to be real. You know, will we ever know the truth on 9-11? For, for a lot of people, it's a conspiracy. For a lot of people, it was, you know, what it was. Will we ever know? No. But you can say, for me, that's what it was. And if we go with resonance, right? If we go with resonance, meaning if we feel that who we're listening to and what we're reading about actually hits our spirit at the core. That's residence. No evidence is needed to hit that core. 
as a matter of fact, no evidence out there, no scientific study, no PhD title, no book experts credentials can trump that. Because when we know at the core what we resonate with, what hit our spirit at the deepest core, we know that's our truth, not the truth. It's our truth, right? So just a little side note again, why we're doing this podcast. If you're here to look for evidence, to see what studies we're referring to, and is that study more valid than the study you believe in? And is our expert as, uh, you know, revered or, or accredited as the one you believe that this is the wrong podcast for you. Don't waste your time. Do not waste your time. This is for people who come here with an open mind, who will let what we say sink in. And if it doesn't resonate, who will move on without judgment and say, yeah, well, that's not what I believe in. That's who it's for. Or of course, the people who come here, it resonates with them and they say, yes, I'm going to try something similar or I'm going to give this a shot. Again, that's who it's for. It's not for the argumentative, the righteous, um, the, the judgmental. Of course, we all are that as human beings intrinsically. I am that too. But this, this podcast isn't here to support that. It isn't to get to some ultimate truth that everyone should agree on. That's not what this is about. So keep listening with an open mind and let's talk more about the reality of things. As I just said, when we interviewed Mickey Agrawal yesterday, she had mentioned to us that she also believes there's social constructs such as education, psychology, psychiatry, you know, Um, even we talked about money, we talked about, uh, you know, countries and and borders of between countries, it's all made up. And I'm going to say it again, it's all made up, not in a sense that it's all bullshit. No, that's not what we're saying. It does exist currently in our reality as a thing. When you're standing on a border somewhere, say between Mexico and the U S you are technically, you are literally you're standing on a border. It might even be painted like a line, right? So is it real? Well, it's real as an agreement, but it's not real as a truth. Now, let me explain that as an agreement. It's real because we have agreed there's a border between us and Mexico. And we have agreed that we've created these little booklets called passports and that we've created these, these identities or nationalities called Mexican and and American, right? We can agree on that because at some point someone brought it up and we agreed or a committee agreed might have not been us and follow me along and I'll bring it back to ADHD, of course, but there's agreement needed to create a reality called a border between two countries or passports or nationalities. Therefore, an agreement is needed somewhere in the air, when you take an airplane and you cross a invisible border, it's not even real visibly in the air, but there's an agreement. Once you cross into this airspace, you're now in, you know, on foreign territory and you need a visa. Visa is another agreement that was created. These things were not here before we created them. And that's what I want to get to with ADHD. The label of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, was not here when humans got to the planet. It just simply was not. If we can just agree on that, it did not exist. What we did at some point, we created first a norm. This is how normal children act. This is the school system. You know, we're trying to put everyone in this system so they can come out the other way, a certain educated way, a certain behavioral way. And the more we started seeing kids with um, what we call defiant behavior, where they would say, I don't like to sit still. I don't want to be in a room with 30 kids. I don't want to do math right now. I need to go outside. I don't, I'm not hungry at this hour. I need to eat now, right? The more we saw that, we started labeling, and that's where it started, not with the actual term ADHD. We started labeling the symptoms. Even the word symptom is a label. Because all it was, was 
certain children acting different than others. And because they were in the minority back then, and I do feel that in 20 to 30 years, uh, the sort of ADHD type of brain will actually be surpassing minority and even the tipping point. And so then the new normal will be what, right? That's a whole nother uh, episode I'm going to be doing. The new normal, right, in the future. But let's just stick with this, right? We needed to label something a symptom. Because really, the only way we could have labeled it before was, oh, wow, there's these two kids amongst the 10, and they certainly do not behave like the eight. Well, if we go with majority, meaning eight are normal and two are not, now they're abnormal. Now you're start, you know, starting to get the idea that we're, you know, just calling them abnormal didn't work. It was like, well, okay, so... Well, they are abnormal and they seem different and they're not paying attention and it's, you know, sort of like not working for the mass, for the rest of us, for the other eight and the teacher and the system. So we need to kind of give them uh, something, a label. But in order to do that, we have to first identify what makes them different. Like why, what are the things, the traits, right? And so that's how we came up with, oh, they're not paying attention. They're impulsive. They're, they're talking. They're not conscientious, you know, all that stuff. So those became the traits and then those were the symptoms and then we just wanted to give it a name. So these kids that are blah, 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 blah. Why don't we just call it a name? Like they're the abnormal ones or broken ones or unruly ones or misbehaving ones. And at some point, psychiatrists decided that it'd be better to just give it a term like attention deficit disorder as it used to be called, and then it became attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And soon it'll be called attention deficit hyperactivity defiant disorder. Who knows, right? It's all, it's all um, arbitrary. So that's truly how ADHD became a disorder. There's no mystery around that. There is no Well, that's not true. I mean, it is a disorder. People struggle with it. Absolutely. I'm not saying there aren't certain children and adults out there in the world having challenges because they are realizing that in order to be considered normal or sort of get with it in this world, how it's currently constructed, this box, they do have challenges that are labeled with with this name, ADHD in this case. There's many other mental disorders, right? So yes, there are people out there challenged to function in this world. Now, is that a function of them being disordered or is it a world that's not all inclusive and is not set up for all types of us human beings to function and survive and thrive? I'm going to say that again. Do these people have a disorder or do we live in a disordered world? And you may laugh at the statement. You may, uh, this is, by the way, a statement by Dr. Thomas Armstrong, who we also interviewed for the documentary. Uh, He's the author of uh, The Myth of the ADHD Child. And again, none of these experts are saying, even though there's a book called ADHD Does Not Exist. um, The symptoms certainly exist and the labeling certainly exists. What we're arguing as well as a family what I'm arguing as a podcast host and filmmaker, and what many of these experts, uh, many of them New York Times bestselling authors, argue is that it's made up. And not made up, again, as in it doesn't exist and there aren't certain people out there struggling to function in this world. We're simply saying it's made up as a disorder. Even the word disorder just says it's not orderly. Based on what? Based on the norm. And the norm is what they're trying to prove out there. Um, You know, scientists trying to prove that there's a normal brain, which by the way, does not exist. Um, Scientifically proven does not exist. Um, So if we're comparing everything to a norm, to a normal, of course, we're going to come up with some abnormal again, until there's a tipping point. And we realize now there's more abnormal than normal. So I guess the abnormal is now the normal. You see how that works? And I think we're approaching that tipping point very soon here in the next 10 to 20 years. Mark my words. I'm not a futurist, but it doesn't take a brain scientist or a futurist to figure that out, that we're approaching a tipping point 
uh, with more people that have what's called quote unquote, like mental disorders than the norm. And then the question is a, what causes it this increase? That's another episode B if there's no normal, why do we keep comparing brains that are unique, different, even if they're struggling, why do we keep comparing them to something called the norm or normal? Well, first of all, we like to categorize things and put things into buckets so we can refer to them. Nothing wrong with that. I would argue here that the biggest wrong with it, with doing that, is that an, a label such as a, an ADHD as a disorder, as a disability used to be called. Some experts, including Russell Barkley, still call it a disability. It used to be called a disease before it was a disorder. When we label someone, a human being with that disempowering word or label, there are negative side effects merely just by labeling someone with a word that's disempowering. Why does it have to be disempowering? How come we need to label someone who's obviously struggling in life, has challenges to adapt and thrive, to adapt to and thrive in this world, the way it's currently set up? How come we need to add, uh, what is it, insult to injury? And we need to, you know, label it with a disempowering label, a word. That's all we're saying for now, which is why the title ADHD is over, basically saying that term we're done with as a family, as we, the Wyden family, right? Hopefully other parents will agree that for them it's over too, because then we start to flip the agreement that that label is disempowering. And it's funny because I hear it so often from other parents. Oh my God, thank you, Dr. So-and-so for finally diagnosing my child with ADHD. Now we know what it is and we've always known something was up. And now, now we finally, what they're saying is now we finally have a crutch and a shift in blame that it's not bad parenting. It's not us. It, oh, good, thank God it's genetic. And don't get me started on that. I'll get into genetics on another, in another episode because that's also completely debunked that it's not genetic as in predetermined. You know, some, some specialists or experts still use that, that it's just, what, it's just genetic. It's not. Genetics are not predetermined. We know that. I'm not sure if they didn't get that memo. Um, I'm getting sidetracked here. There's so many things, obviously. But again, my point is that it's a label. And if it's a disempowering label, it's not going to benefit anyone. So ADHD is over in a sense is saying, let's change the agreement that this term no longer works this term and everything that's associated with is actually causing more harm than good. So, you know, there's no solution to give you right now. What's the solution? This is supposed to be a movement, you know, where other parents can resonate with this and go, you know what? I agree. My kid is different. We almost, or they almost label them. We don't want to label and medicate, but then what do we do? So this is an exploration if you follow us along on this podcast and ultimately the movie and, and beyond the film, the movement, you will see that there isn't one solution. There's only one way to approach it powerfully. And we're going to get into that in further episodes. And it really is all about being empowered as a parent, taking responsibility for everything in life, not blaming the child, not blaming anything, but not looking at your child as the one with the problem. So not like what's wrong with my child, but more like what happened to my child in the environment that we're in and the environment we're giving our child as a family and the family history of stress and trauma of environmental influences. And yes, there's nutrition. Yes, there's exercise. Yes, there's the school, the type of schooling. There's many elements. And this podcast, along with our project, other projects like the film, you know, serve as a sort of a means to document our journey to see what could be done if we could be done with this 
label of ADHD and create something more empowering and actually give the power back to the parents, not to the pharmaceutical companies, not to the psychologists and the psychiatrists. And don't get me wrong, they all have their place. This is not an anti-pharma. This is not an anti-psychiatry movement. Not at all. Not at all. If anything, if this is anything anti, I would say it's anti parents giving up their own power to find the right way to guide their children and have them thrive in lives. That's really the only thing it would be anti for parents to say, you know what, there's something wrong with my child. Medication's the way to go or labeling him as the way to go. And you know, we're just going to, it's just going to be a thing for life. If anything, we're anti that we're not anti, uh, you know, pharma, psychiatry and so forth. But I think there's room for improvement in all of this because we're approaching ourselves, human beings, especially children with struggles and what they call disorders. We're approaching them like they're the problem. We're not willing to look at ourselves deeper, our own history of, of perhaps trauma, things we could heal, transform, you know, develop ourselves as parents, as human beings, as as women as men, you know, as, as fathers and, and even as sons and daughters and so forth, right? We are underestimating the power of conscious parenting. We are using hand-me-down fear, parenting, trauma, stress to raise our children with. And again, not pointing at any one particular cause, but it's all adding up. The issue we have is when certain experts say it's all nutrition, or it's all the brain, or it's all the child, or it's genetic. None of these statements are actually what's so. And we've discovered this, and we will be, we will be sharing more of our insights and research on the results that we've seen with our children. It's not one thing. It's everything. Now, we have discovered along the way that, that trauma and stress uh, and this is another episode where we will go much, much more into detail with, with, you know, top level experts on trauma. It's a, such a huge part. And that's the part that we mostly ignore because most parents are down to change a diet. Most parents are down to do some therapy, to do some special ed, to do some meds, to do, you know, the things that sort of are in this camp of, well, it's the child. So if we change that, then it'll be fine. Right. What we're not doing is putting a mirror in front of us and saying, what can I do as a parent? What can I take responsibility for? Not to be blamed or my fault. But what can we take responsibility for in order to shift this, in order to actually make ADHD disappear? Now, I know that's a crazy statement. Let's just say, let the ADHD trades, you know, slow down or improve or whatever you want to call it, right? It's, it's step by step. It's not a magical poof, the rabbit's gone kind of thing. But what if it could be disappeared? And we've talked to many experts, including Marilyn Wedge, who wrote a book called uh, A Disease Called Childhood. And she has seen dozens, if not, well, yeah, dozens, and I don't think it's hundreds, but dozens of families um, that have come to her and, you know, were seeking help uh, for their child with ADHD. And what they've realized is when they started family therapy and when they actually treated anything but the child, that the child over time, and we're talking only a few months, that those symptoms of ADHD started to disappear. And she will talk about that in the film. And we're also going to have her on the podcast. But if you think about that again, you know, then you really want to question the narrative that we've been buying into that are, there's something wrong with our children, that they're disordered, that it's them, that they have a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's neurological, it's genetic, it's predetermined. It's all this stuff. We're going to go into all of these truths and you'll see there's actually another side to each of those statements. And we just want to show that so you can decide for yourself. So that's it. Now I was going to go on, but, uh, there's a gardener in the neighborhood with his leaf blower, and that's going to be loud in a second. So this is my cue to say goodbye for now. Thank you for being uh, 
a listener for our podcast ADHD is over. Our journey is far from over, so we look forward to having you back soon. All right. Thanks for listening.
This was another episode of You Love Life. Until next time, be yourself, love always, and enjoy your life.